Prophet Muhammad said, ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيها أحب إلى الله من هذه الأيام. He said that there are no days that doing righteous deeds in them are more beloved to Allah than these ten days or these days. And he was speaking about Dhul Hijjah. And so this is a really great opportunity for us to really get into the spirit of worship. You know, Shaykh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi, he was once asked, what are the best ten days? And he said, the ten days of Dhul Hijjah. And then the questioner said, well, what about the last ten nights of Ramadan? He said, those are the best ten nights. So the same fervor that we have for the last ten nights, I want you to picture in your mind the month of Ramadan, the last ten nights, the masjid being packed, everyone there celebrating and worshiping together. Those last ten nights, really working hard to get close to Allah, we should have that same energy as a community for the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah, according to this understanding of Shaykh Al-Islam at Mitaymiyyah. So, what are some things that we can do? You know, if you're at Hajj, your itinerary is already set, you kind of got to go from here to there, you don't really have, you know, you got to do all the, all the sort of milestones of Hajj, you don't really have a shortage of things to do, let's say. But when it comes to being away from Hajj and still trying to benefit from Dhul Hijjah, you have to come up with your own itinerary. And so I've come up with a list of things that I'm going to try to do inshallah and I request or I offer them and suggest them to you to join me inshallah. The first thing is I'm really going to focus on trying to have a meaningful relationship with the Quran and really start it off these first 10 days. You know, the Quran is the spiritual nourishment of the soul. And if a person doesn't have that connection with the Quran in a meaningful way, they're going to be spiritually dehydrated. It's just a matter of fact. And unfortunately, a lot of us end up feeling that, especially after Ramadan is ending. So we have to really make an attempt, inshallah, and really make an effort to have a meaningful relationship with the Quran, to study it in a way that is sustainable for the entire year, maybe five minutes a day, but to do it consistently and to grow in that relationship. The second is to have a great relationship with the masjid. You know, Ramadan is super special for a lot of reasons. And one of those reasons is that everybody goes to the masjid and sees each other there and connects there. It becomes the hub for the community. So make it a point in these first 10 days to make an, a relationship, a standing relationship with the masjid, inshallah. The third thing I'm going to try to do, inshallah, is repair any relationships that I have that perhaps have gotten sour or for maybe an argument or just broke apart for whatever reason or just became stale over time due to distance or lack of communication to reach out to people, ask them how they're doing, rebuild the relationships, inshallah. This is one of the most underrated good deeds that a person can do is to reestablish good relationships with people that they previously had and then for some reason just grew, grew distant apart from them. The fourth thing, inshallah, is to give sadaqa. You know, there's no shortage of opportunities to support whether it's the refugees in Syria uh, that are now migrating to other lands now, unfortunately, due to force, uh, having to seek refuge in other places, whether it's Burma, whether it's Bangladesh, whether it's, you know, Central Africa, suffering from all these different sort of kinds of wars and struggles, you know, Somalia, for example, you can give in support, inshallah, or locally. You know, if you live somewhere where you can really contribute, inshallah, there's poverty everywhere and there's people in need everywhere, make sure that you contribute to help solve that issue, inshallah ta'ala, in these 10 days. And the last thing is fasting. You know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was sunnah to fast these days, and especially on the day of Arafah, which is the ninth day. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was asked about the blessing and the virtue of fasting on this day of Arafah, and he said, يُكَفِّرُ السَّنَةَ الْمَاضِيَةَ وَالْبَاقِيَةَ He said that this, doing this deed will expiate an entire year from previous and forthcoming. So you'll get that benefit of being able to get your sins erased from the previous year and the forthcoming year. What an amazing benefit that is for fasting one single day. So maybe gather an iftar, gather some friends and do that inshallah and fast together and fast as many days as you can inshallah. And with that, if we focus on these five things, then I think we'll have put in so much effort and come close to Allah that celebrating Eid Al-Adha on that day, on the 10th day, inshallah, will feel like an amazing opportunity, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll actually feel like we actually earned it and we worked hard, inshallah ta'ala. So with that, I say congratulations on making it to the month of Dhul Hijjah. Let's work hard, let's roll our sleeves up and get to work, inshallah. And I hope and pray that everyone has a great Dhul Hijjah.